I am Spider-Man. <laughs> you heard David say it in the introduction. That's a title that pretty much gets given to everybody who works on spiders. I like to think that I take it a little more literally than others. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kirsten Dunst wasn't available on the day to fully recreate the Spider-Man kissing scene, but uh, Kirsten, if you're watching, Just before I get started, uh, I have a bit of a quiz for everyone. Um, do we have anybody who's arachnophobic? Just a show of hands, anyone that's scared of spiders? Yeah, we've got a couple, good. You having a good day? Yeah, I'm probably about to ruin it for you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. As you're probably aware, our life expectancy is increasing. Uh, we're living longer, particularly in the Western world. And one of the issues with this is that the impact and burden of disease is also increasing. Just as an example, cancer rates are up around 50% by the time you turn 85. So if you have one other special person in your life, by the time you're 85, chances are at least one of you will have been diagnosed with a cancer. And unfortunately, for many of these diseases, including cancer, adequate therapies just aren't available. The pharmaceutical industry has technologies available to generate millions of molecules at any one time. Yet, in the 25 years to 2007, only one of those molecules made it to market as a drug. In any other scenario, that's abject failure and it's just not good enough. So on behalf of everybody who is suffering disease and who is going to suffer disease, we need the industry and researchers to get access to new molecules. So where can we look? Well, nature is the master chemist. There are molecules that exist in nature that some of the best scientists in the world can't even begin to figure out how to make and some of the most active molecules are found in venoms. I'd just like to give two short examples of venoms that are actually, have actually been turned into drugs. The first is a drug called Preolt, which comes from this venomous marine snail. This snail injects fish with a venom through that little harpoon, and it paralyzes them before it eats it. There's a molecule in the venom that just so happens to block a receptor in the pathway that makes us or allows us to feel the sensation of pain. So Preolt is used in the treatment of chronic pain, such as that experienced by cancer patients. Second example is a molecule from the venom of the Gila monster lizard. It mimics a hormone in the, in the human body and stimulates the secretion of insulin. So it's used to treat type 2 diabetes. I just want to also briefly mention another molecule that is in development at the moment from scorpion venom uh, as, a, as a tumor paint to help treat brain cancer. Uh, now this molecule has been the subject of its own TED talk by the program leader, Jim Olson, and I urge you to uh, seek that out. But I'm here today to share our idea about um, working with one of the richest resources of natural molecules. The story begins when I was six at school, that's me, and I was given an assignment. It was in the form of a little booklet full of questions that we had to answer. Questions such as, what is your favorite color? What sport do you like? And one of those questions was, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answer was, I want to be a scientist and study spiders. I managed to achieve that dream, and for the last 20 years, I've been studying spider venoms. Spiders are the most successful venomous creature on the planet. They are found on pretty much every landmass and in every habitat. There are 45, nearly 45,000 species known, and collectively, 
their venom contains in the order of four to 10 million active molecules. Our work is focusing on the venom of the Australian funnel web spider and the tropical tarantulas. These guys are found locally. The research is very early stage. We're looking through the venom to see if we can find molecules that are active against cancer. In order to do that, one of the first things we need to do is obtain venom. This is done through a process called milking. Our milking is a little unconventional. <laughs> it's not quite the same as your average dairy farm, and I'm not quite your average dairy farmer. So how do we go about it? First thing you need is a conveniently prepackaged funnel web spider. And then it's a simple case of annoying it. Apparently, I'm quite talented at that. When aggravated, the spider will rear back and excrete venom onto the fang tips that can then be collected with a little aspirator. The tarantulas, on the other hand, aren't quite this easy and, provide, and require a little more provoking, so we have a little electrical device to give them a few volts. Once we have our venom samples, we can analyze it, run it over cancer cells, and see if we get any activity. The good news is that in our early stage research, we have identified a couple of molecules that are selective towards cancer cells with a preference towards breast cancer. Before I leave, I want to give you an example of why spider venoms may be useful as therapeutics. When we were preparing for this TEDx talk, we were actually shown this chart, and it represents audience attention during presentations. These are the people who are paying attention to what I'm saying. These people are thinking about other things, what they had for lunch, what they're having for dinner, and everybody else is thinking about sex. <laughs> and you all know who you are. <laughs> the upshot of this was that I was told that in order to, for me to capture your attention, my presentation had to be better than sex. Now, that's a pretty relative scale, so it probably depends a little bit on how many shades of grey you are. Uh, but what I want to try and do is momentarily unite everybody. I'd like you to meet the Brazilian arm spider. This is listed as the world's most venomous spider by the Guinness World Records, and it's found in the tropical regions of South America. People bitten by this spider were turning up to hospital, suffering from many, many symptoms, some of which included severe pain, paralysis, and in the case of male patients, quite an unusual side effect in painfully engorged directions. This led researchers to... <laughs> this, this cartoon was commissioned for this talk, too, by the way. <laughs> this led researchers to look through the venom to try and find the molecule that was responsible for that side effect. They've done that, they've identified it, and they're looking to develop it as a treatment for erectile dysfunction. So, Viagra with bite, if you will. So what have we learnt? Nature has a wealth of molecules there for us to look at. Venoms offer a large number of active molecules, and as the most venomous creature on the planet, spiders offer us a really rich resource of active molecules waiting to be explored and developed. I have one more thing I want to do before I leave, 
This uh, will hopefully give you an idea of um, what inspires us to do what we do. This is an email I received in 2011, just after I'd started working on cancer. Um, we, we had done a press release about our work. It's from a woman named Jean. Dear Dr. Wilson, my friend has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. She has had her left breast removed and her lymph glands from that side. The cancer has spread to her lungs and liver. She saw the news story on the work you are doing and she is very interested. I'm contacting you on her behalf as she is in and out of hospital constantly. She's not ready to die as she has twin girls who will turn six in January. The doctors have said she may not make it to Christmas. She's not willing to accept this and will try anything as she really has nothing to lose. Sadly, Jean's friend Wendy passed away shortly after this message. So, <clears throat> it's my goal to see a molecule from spider venom on the market as a drug, a, to a toxin taken to a tonic, so that in the future I can give hope and a solution to people like Jean and Wendy. Thank you. <laughs>